and welcome to another episode of TTG Conversations Innovator Chat. I'm Pamela Chow and today we have Sarah Matthews. She is the Group Head of Destination Marketing APEC at TripAdvisor. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Pamela. How are you going? Hi, everything's great. Thanks for asking. So today we want to find out more about TripAdvisor's recent live data dashboard and and its role in the travel ecosystem recovery. So Sarah, can you start us off with, you know, telling us about what are the key functionalities of the live data intelligent dashboard? Well, let me, let me first of all say it's great being here. Um, the question on the sort of what do we have in the dashboard, I would probably say is how long do you have? We <laughs> yeah. an entire house full of really useful insights that destinations can utilize. Um, and particularly, I'd say, you know, we've seen in the last 10 years plus that data and insights is really powerful to help businesses plan effectively, understand what their consumers are looking for. I'd say it's particularly vital now during the pandemic where destinations are trying to understand what consumers are thinking about. So to give a quick overview, um, on what the Insight platform includes is ultimately it provides a lot of the data sets that a destination needs um, to really help them understand where they're at currently and where they're at, um, for example, against their competitors, um, looking at their, their travelers, what are they doing? When are they planning? Um, so there are a few core sets within that um, one being our destination trends, which is a really powerful tool. It looks at their current uh, overall visibility and the intent of consumers looking to travel to that destination. And that is broken out by month, by day. You can see domestic versus international, which is really critical right now because for a lot of us in Asia Pacific, borders are closed. And so having that domestic view is vital. Um, we also look at what opportunity markets are there for that destination, right? Again, that gives them some insight as we see, for example, the Australian, New Zealand uh, travel bubble opening up. We know that Singapore is also looking to extend some of those travel bubbles. We know that Phuket in Thailand is looking to open up to travelers who have taken the vaccine. All of that, if you look through that data, it should reflect that and show them what those consumers are doing in that planning. With that in mind, the other data set that I think is really powerful is what we call the property and location data set. And we look at location by source market. So that's where the traveler's coming from. Um, where are they coming from, right? And what regions and cities are they searching? So, you know, if I'm looking at Thailand, for example, like where are Singaporeans searching the most to visit? when they can visit, right? Um, we also look at how the businesses, um, sort of what's trending as well. So what are the top restaurants and experiences, attractions, accommodation for Singaporean travelers looking at, let's say Phuket at a particular time of frame. Um, and then as well, what that helps with is it really helps match that product up with the traveler type. So if it's a family looking to travel, you can really think about as a destination, what is it that you want to showcase? Um, we also have the economic and media insights. So that's really a powerful tool because when you work with TripAdvisor, we want to make sure that everything you do is measurable. And we look at the economic impact. I think particularly now, as we move future into the future of travel, you know, looking at the economic impact is probably more important than just arrival numbers. So using this, it actually determines the users that booked, what did they do within that space? Did they book um, accommodation? What was their average daily rate? Um, you know, how many nights did they stay? And then for our media effectiveness, it looks at the campaign itself. So, um, you know, how did that campaign perform? for users that saw the ad versus users that didn't see the ad. And again, that really builds out, you know, is your messaging resonated with the, resonating with the consumer? 
And then the final component is our competitive dashboard, which is really powerful. And that actually helps a destination understand when a user is looking at them, where else are they searching? Where else is sort of trying to take that consumer um, to that destination? So what is that consumer thinking about? All of this builds up a very robust set of insights that helps develop both marketing, but also product development. It can, in some spaces, also look at infrastructure, right? You might say, well, I've got a huge influx of people looking to come, but our airport or our capacity isn't enough. So how do we build that? So there's really powerful insights in that. And like I said, that's just the snapshot. There's a lot more I can go into, but uh, we've got only got a set amount of time here today, Paula. <laughs> That's right, uh, but I'm really sure that it's a completely robust system. And you know, I want to know more about all of these uh, core functionalities. Why were uh, they introduced at this juncture? You know, why was it critical at this period of time? Well, it's something that you know we've been talking about um, building for destinations. You know, um, working with so many destinations globally. We understand that for some of them, they don't have access to all of this information. And so it was really critical for us to build this out. Um, and as I mentioned, it, it, it's an opportune time as well, because you need information, insights right now to really plan effectively because of border closures, because we have to understand, you know, vaccination. And it's different globally. You know, we look at Asia Pacific, and we look at the sort of the border closure really since 2020, there's more of a conservative nature in Asia Pacific. So these destinations can utilize that information to build out their road to being open again as well, right? And it's useful for them to take back to their own governments to work out, you know, what travel bubbles are probably useful to look at developing, right? You know. TripAdvisor, you have a whole world of uh, businesses and destinations in your repository. So this, of course, includes the more traditional ones, the ones who are still operating on a more traditional structure. So can you walk us through the process of working with uh, these destinations and these organizations and educating them in adopting the dashboard? Absolutely. It, it's something that's been really close to my heart for you know, the number of years where I've been working across Asia Pacific. There are some destinations that have dived head in to the data side and really built out their own systems, um, really looking at data sourcing and how they can use that information. There are some destinations that haven't gotten into that space. So certainly for us um, consistently and during 2020, for a lot of our destination partners, we'd actually been giving them really um, uh, regular updates on travel trends to ensure that they're you know, um, fully aware of what's going on. And that also includes our sentiment side as well. So, you know, we also recently partnered with Think and we're, we've got this tourism sentiment uh, index as well. And that's great because it gives the destination uh, another set of insights that they can utilize um, and help them understand what consumers are thinking about as well, especially when it comes to that destination. So. For me, it's been consistently about educating and supporting these destinations, whether they're a really large destination or a small destination, knowing where they should be driving their business and who they should be talking to. So, but I know it's only been a really recent launch, um, but you know, so far from what you've seen, uh, how has it already helped uh, travel and hospitality and of course, destinations? We've been looking at some of the insights and our partners have been using it as well. I mean, an example of what we saw was, you know, we noticed, um, for example, in Northern Territory, um, the review scores, the bubble rating, as we call it on TripAdvisor, they actually, uh, from June until November last year, really spiked high, particularly for the attraction side. And we can see that couples were a core segment that were reviewing this. And that's great because when you think about it, you know, there were lockdowns across Australia, and yet the performance of these businesses, they were really still focused on customer performance, hospitality, and really supporting um, travelers. The other thing is, is looking at, you know, where, where uh, travelers are looking and, you know, are they getting back to that point where pre-pandemic, and again, we've seen that for a number of destinations where 
the domestic travel is back to where it was before and it's really encouraging and again something that they can focus on for a lot of destinations there may have been more heavily skewed towards international right now they need to shift and that also comes down to product development you know i live in hong kong i might think i know everything about hong kong but if there's you know a, a guide or a, a tour business who wants to show me something that I didn't know about Hong Kong, I'm going to put my hand up and do that because I want to have that experience. But it means that that business needs to think about what that domestic user is interested in, because if they've been traditionally targeting international, they need to change that product um, suite. Yeah, and that's very true. And that's definitely a concern that we're seeing across APEC and across the world, really. Mm -hmm. So, you know, over the past few months, you know, mining all this rich data about consumer sentiment and intent, you know, can you share with us what new insights have been gleaned, whether by TripAdvisor or by the businesses and destinations on your platform? Families have started to, you know, look at different types of experiences and that's actually gone up. We know, for example, you know, all of last year and continues to be that outdoor activities um, is what most people are looking to do. So we can break that down, delve in a bit deeper and look at from a month to month, as well as breaking down those, those traveler segments, what they're most interested in um, and help those destinations develop. So it could be that, you know, we may never have thought of, you know, um, hiking could be a major thing and it could even be for someone like Destination Singapore, but how do you build that up that makes sense, right? You know, Hong Kong is a major hiking city. Uh, a lot of people know that, some people may not know that. Um, so again, that helps develop like, well, where are they hiking right now domestically? And how can we build that information out? So again, it gives that the destination and even local businesses a, a more of an idea of how they can uh, utilize that information. So if I understand right, so far we're seeing a lot of hope in the, the couples market, the families, and of course outdoor activities are hugely on the rise. And you know, from your observations, you know, with vaccinations rolling out across the region, uh, how have these trends maybe evolved? How have consumer intentions changed? Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly when we've been running um, over 2020 till date, we've been running a, a regular consumer survey. And what's really exciting to see is that, you know, when we asked our recent, we did our recent survey, 45% of our consumers reported that they're comfortable traveling in 2021 compared to 2020. I think we can certainly see that. Now, that's a global stat. And, you know, certainly for myself, you know, I think one thing that is absolutely clear is the one thing you ask anyone what they want to do, and the first thing they'll say is, I want to travel. So whilst the travel industry has been heavily impacted, it's also proven that, you know, travel is so critical to nearly everyone and that it's the first thing they think about. I think as well, what we've seen is that globally 52% of consumers are more likely to travel internationally if they can get the vaccine. So there is this feeling that, you know, as I get the vaccine, I'll be able to travel. And I think we're gonna start seeing this particularly, you know, globally and whether or not, um, you know, across Asia Pacific, can we get into regional travel back up? Because you look at our, you know, across most of the destinations, the, the numbers of infections are fairly low. Um, and, you know, we've seen Australia, New Zealand, we've seen Taiwan, Hong Kong, China, all really managing those numbers very well. So the question will be, as we develop these travel bubbles with the vaccine, like how confident people will be to travel. And I think they will be. And because there's that need, I also think because a lot of destinations in Asia Pacific, we're, we're, we're used to it, right? We've, we've understood the, the requirements of health and safety. Um, and so one of the things I would also encourage destinations as well as local businesses to do is make sure that they're, they're using our travel safe feature, which is something they can do very quickly. They update, they just tell the consumer what they're doing, because I think clarity is going to be what people want when they travel. You know, if I go into a hotel or if I'm in La Passat in Singapore, like, do I need to wear a mask? 
so on and so forth, right? So all of that information will help guide the consumer. So, you know, back to the current, the present, at least in, in the short term, you know, when we are seeing uh, rolling domestic travel activity in APEC, you know, what opportunities uh, is TripAdvisor looking at? Do you have any maybe budding innovations to look out for? We're constantly looking. Um, I think we're always developing, um, looking at what consumers are doing as well, and also within the businesses. I also think it's important to look at what the consumer is used to. So like I said, you know, across Asia Pacific, there's probably certain things that we've been living with for, you know, a year and a half, where we were probably want to, you know, we're used to a certain type of travel. As we start to see more borders opening up, you know, whether it's Europeans or other markets traveling over to Asia, what are their expectations? And vice versa, as Asians start to travel um, globally, what will their expectations be? So, you know, not just for TripAdvisor, but I think for the whole industry, we really need to think about what, we, what we've been doing and what that, that will be required from the different regions and the different markets. We know that in Asia, we're a little bit more conservative, a little bit more um, concerned. And so, you know, there's no, no concern about, you know, mask wearing, temperature taking. In fact, that's kind of expected. Um, so that'll be useful to see as we start uh, the travel bubbles and opening up of the borders. I would also in include like, you know, for, for the travel industry and for all of the businesses, um, you know, we need, we all need to support them. You know, so going out where you can to eat locally um, one of the things I've loved during this time being in Hong Kong, and I normally travel everywhere, has been I've been able to discover things that I didn't know. And I've been able to go to new restaurants, new shops, new experiences, um, getting to meet new people across Hong Kong. It's been great. And it's something that I wouldn't have thought of. And I think what this has done is also helped people get to know their own backyard. Um, but I still think it's really critical where we can is to support our local businesses as much as you can. So, you know, if you're thinking about giving a gift, you know, uh, get a gift certificate for a hotel and give that to someone, whether it's a meal um, or even, you know, buying a, a box of really nice cookies from a, a hotel, from their, from their restaurants. All of those things really help our industry and we should continue to do that. Great. Thank you so much on that really positive and uplifting note. Uh, we are going to end the session here. That's all the time that we have. Thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us today. Thanks so much, Pamela. Thank you. And to our viewers out there, please get in touch with us if you have any feedback or you have interest in joining TTG Conversations Innovator Chat. Thank you for your time and have a great day, everyone.